Hello, in this video I want to have another look at the long Y switch mode power supply. So specifically one I want to have a look at is see if we can do anything about the noise issue. The noise can get quite offensive when you're measuring things on the scope. Uh, we can try to have a look here what it looks like. So what we're looking at here, so I have power supply hooked up here, just set it to 5 volt outputs, we have some kind of standard uh, baseline. And then I hooked up a small load here, so we see currently it's um, currently reloading it up with 2.42 amps here. And then I just have the scope attached, so the scope is attached directly to the output here. And if we try to zoom in a little bit on the scope, so we can capture it here. We kind of have two different kinds of noise here. One, the, the spikes here, that is switching noise. That is really the, the one that annoys me the most. And then we have these smaller uh, peaks and dips here. So that is more the ripple of the power supply. So I would like to see if I can do anything to get rid or at least lower this switching noise here, because it is, it is quite annoying. So this power supply does actually also produce another type of noise uh, on the higher loads. You can try to see here if I up the voltage here. You see it starts generating this kind of sine wave pattern, and but that's not really noise, that's more the regulation, so I think it's just too slow regulating, so it's kind of overcompensating every time uh, it adjusts the output, so it will adjust too much and then it will compensate again and then it will adjust too much and blah blah, blah and then you get this kind of sine wave pattern. However, I don't think there's much we can do about that. And the same with the ripple, I don't think there's much we can do about that. But I want to have a go at the switching noise and see if we can do something about that. I've taken the cover off the power supply here. So I want to see if we can find the exact source of where the high frequency switching noise is generated. So I don't have any fancy uh, probes for this, but uh, you should just take a normal scope probe. Just take the tip up here. And then take the ground wire, just twist it around one turn, and just connect it here, short it out. So that will give us a probe. And that should help us locate exactly where the noise is coming from. So I'm switching on the power supply now. And you can already see on the scope that it's picking up the noise. So if we start over here, just kind of moving it along here. It's getting more and more and more and more and more. And right here, it's at maximum, I think. Yeah. So this high frequency noise really gets radiated out of the power supply. This is an easy way to locate where the noise is coming from. So you have a good idea where to where to look. So the thing is with switching noise, uh, when you want to do something about it, uh, really the best thing you can do is to eliminate it at the source. Um, trying to get rid of the switching noise later on in the circuit uh, might not help anything because it's going to radiate out into everything. And we can see this area here. It corresponds with two of the devices we have on heat sinks uh, on the other side, so I will assume those are switching transistors. So we can try to have a closer look and see if we can figure out exactly how they're doing it. So let's have a closer look at the board inside here. So we can kind of see the primary high voltage side is over here. Well, I think it goes from here. There's an optocoupler down here, so it goes there. You can see board cut out. We have some kind of current sense here and splits here with another transformer and then this is the main transformer and then we probably go over here. So everything down here is high voltage, over here is the low voltage secondary. So I'd really like to see what these two devices are. Uh, I kind of guess they're going to be two MOSFETs. Um, but it's really hard to see because they're kind of totally obscured by the transformer here. And this device over here, what is that? 
So I managed to take a couple of pictures here uh, using some spotlights and we can see the devices here. So this is a Fairchild, let us say 10N60 something. And the other device over here is an MBR3200C. And the device on the other side of the transformer is also a Fairchild device, also 10N60. It looks like a C here. So those two were the same. That kind of indicates it's a push-pull thing we got going on. And I found a data sheet here. So the two transistors are 600 volt M channel MOSFETs. Uh, these are clearly set up in some kind of push-pull configuration on the primary side. And I got another close-up picture here so we can see the switching controller is an SG3526AP and we have the data sheet here for the switch mode controller and since it's located on the secondary low voltage side I assume this is kind of the configuration uh, they're using okay so these two over here uh, or two MOSFETs and channel MOSFETs this is our main transformer here and down here this is the switch mode controller and it appears this transformer here or I'm pretty sure it's this transformer here is to to transmit the gate control signals over here from the primary side to the secondary side and we can see there are a few transistors and diodes and resistors down here I'm pretty sure that has something to do with uh, driving the gates on these two MOSFETs here so I think the reason it's so noisy is because they're driving the gates quite hard, uh, which is good for efficiency and it's uh, it will keep the MOSFETs cold. Uh, it's not going to be so much power dissipated in them. Uh, however, the downside is we get some pretty bad switching noise. So I think what I will attempt is to see if we can slow down the gates a little bit. Of course, the downside is we will be dissipating a bit more power in the MOSFETs, but I don't think it's going to be a huge issue. Okay, so I think I want to attempt at a resistor on the gate that should hopefully slow down the MOSFET switching a little bit. So what we have here is the gate is over here, then we have drain, then we have source here, and the same over here, gate, drain, source. So I had a quick look, but unfortunately it doesn't look like there's any way I can get a resistor in here without making without cutting a trace and adding a resistor. So I'll try one side first here and see if it makes any difference. Just gonna cut this trace here, add a small resistor in there. Okay, so I think I want to try with a 10 ohm resistor first, or well, let's take 11 ohm because it's less likely I'm going to use 11 ohm in the future. And here it doesn't really matter. Let's get a little bit of more solder on there. Okay, solder in the resistor. Uh, we could also try put a, a capacitor between the gate and the source if this resistor is not enough. All right, let's try power it up and see what happens. I changed my mind. Let's do both sides before we test it because it's gonna be hard to tell uh, how well it's working if we only have one side and it's out of balance. Ah, 
again. Yeah, I've hooked it up again. So it might be a tiny bit better, but it's certainly not good enough to call it a success. So I think we'll have to do some more modifications. Next, I want to try add a small capacitor. So I have these, this is a 33 nanofarad. So I think that's a good starting point. So let's try to get a couple of those in. So those are gonna go between the gate and the source. So I'll cut the legs a bit and I bend it a little bit into shape because we don't want it to get too close to the uh, primary side over here. So let's try again. And here we have it connected again with the capacitors and now it's significantly better. Uh, much, much, much less noise. However, we might be able to do even better. I think I'll try up the resistors to 20 ohm instead of the 11 ohm we have in now. Okay, so it's looking pretty good now. I'm fairly happy with this result here. It is looking a lot better than it did before. Yeah, the switching noise is definitely much, much, much lower. And now we're getting down to such low noise that actually the noise just in the environment here is probably uh, part of what we're seeing here. Doing these tests, I've been running the scope in full bandwidth mode, so that means we're almost 200 megahertz bandwidth here, and using X10 on my probes here, so I can try switch off the power supply and see what difference it makes. Yeah, so you can see with the power supply off, we have nearly as much noise. And just a quick little comparison here. However, it's not job done yet. Uh, we still have to make sure the MOSFETs are not running too hot now because they will be dissipating a little bit more power or maybe a lot more power. Uh, so we need to get a thermal camera out and need to load it up really hard and make sure it's still 100% stable. So here on the thermal camera, I now had the power supply loaded up with about 240 watt load. Uh, just to see how hot it gets, especially the MOSFETs. However, you can see the load over here. It's getting pretty hot. These are 100 watt resistors on a very large heatsink. Eight pieces of 100 watt resistors. And if we look at the power supply here, we can see the bridge rectifiers down here. Well, they get up to, I think, about 60 something degrees. And the, the thermistor here on the input, probably about the same. And we have the main transformer sitting less than 50 degrees. However, the, the MOSFETs over here are not getting hot at all. This is the diode on the output. This is a choke and the output filter, another choke over here. So really, nothing looks like it's getting really hot. Uh, except my low persistence over here, they are getting really hot. So it looks good. I think I could even go a little bit more aggressive with the capacitor on the gate here. Since the MOSFETs were still running quite cool, I decided to do one more modification. So I changed the capacitor to 47 nanofarad and the resistor to 30 ohm. So these are going to be the final values.
then I did a full load test again and you can see a thermal image here so the MOSFETs are just starting to heat up a little bit now uh, almost nothing so let's do a final noise comparison test so here we have it loaded up again 5 volt 2.43 amp and this is still with full bandwidth so nearly 200 megahertz bandwidth here and you can see the switching noise is barely visible and let's just do one final comparison with the first measurement I did so it's a very significant difference and let's just see the comparison with switching the power supply off there we go that's the power supply off power supply on and load it up so there's nearly no difference it is very limited switching noise we have now I'm quite happy with this result here and the load test went fine 250 watt load for 5-10 minutes no problem and just a quick look here this is what the noise looks like on the scope with 20 megahertz bandwidth limiting this is how you usually measure power supplies so that looks quite nice so that's it for this video here i'll rate this as a huge success i hope you enjoyed the video uh, if you did give a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and leave a comment below thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye